Hey everybody and welcome back to Black Spring and it is definitely Thursday. Hope everybody's doing well. I would like to open up with something that I have not opened up with before. With some, it's more of a more of a, a structure that I haven't really used before. But I will go ahead and take you there. Hope everybody's doing well. If you are here, I am happy to have you here as always. And also, you can always always happy to have you drop by, say hi. If you're able to listen, I'm always happy to hear from you. So let's let's just kick off. Um, we'll kick off with a bit of a clip on the beginning of today. And Matt Gates, Congressman Gates, you actually want to take a pretty aggressive step here. What is it? Tomorrow, Laura, I will be filing charges against Nancy Pelosi in the House Ethics Committee. She disgraced the House of Representatives. She embarrassed our country and she destroyed official records. The law does not allow the Speaker of the House to destroy the records of the House and the rules of the House do not permit some little temper tantrum just because you don't like what the President of the United States says. And you know what? A lot of Republicans are sick of the double standard here. When Joe Wilson made a comment, an excited utterance, oh, the Democrats really brought the heat down on him when he said that Obama lied about illegals getting health care under Obamacare. By the way, Joe Wilson was right. But we ought to apply the same standards to the Democrats that they want to apply to us. And there will be an ethics investigation of Nancy Pelosi. And we will start the ball rolling to have her censured. And the first act begins tomorrow when Congressman Zelton and I will join Kay Granger in a censure resolution. And we will force a vote on that resolution. Well, uh, you don't have the majority in the House. Um, I heard today that well, it's not really a formal record because it's a, a copy of the speech the president signed. I heard, I heard murmurs that this is this is cute, but it's not really going to work, Congressman. Well, the, you know, to Matt's point about what happened to Joe Wilson, the House passed a resolution Total naming double names. Right, the double standard, the moral equivalency. We saw it happen this time last year when Elon Omar came in and they were making the comments that were anti-Semitic. We saw different standards applied. If she was a uh, a Republican, she would have been named, able to name names and they would have thrown off her committees. But no, it's different because she's a Democrat. Now, uh, she should be censured. It was a disgrace. It was an embarrassment. She, basically, from the inside out, Nancy Pelosi has been uh, poisoned. Uh, she is now poisoning the House of Representatives and, and Congress and our country because it started off with her getting rolled by her far left, which has basically taken over the Democratic Party. Is she mad, though? Is she mad at herself? She may be. I didn't think she was a stupid person but she does until last it. night when she did that little stunt with it with the, with the ripping. She's not stupid, but Nancy Pelosi has some real impulse control problems. She is the first Speaker of the House of Representatives to have her words taken down by the House of Representatives because she was too personal in her attacks against the president, which were unfounded. That hadn't happened in over 50 years in the House of Representatives. She was the first. But this latest attempt embarrassed the House of Representatives in front of the world. The world was watching the president. He gave an inspirational, fantastic speech. And for her to have a temper tantrum, we don't allow that on the floor of the House of Representatives, and Nancy Pelosi is not above the rules of the House just because she is the Speaker of the House. I just want to set the stage for people about what happened last night in the State of the Union speech versus what was said afterward by the Democrats, and I think putting some of the comments side by side is instructive. Check it out. Your husband is back from deployment. He is here with us tonight, and we couldn't keep him waiting any longer. It was a disgusting performance. Absolutely disgusting. We'll soon be heading to the school of your choice. Don't tell me what you've done for the black community, because you haven't done anything for the black community. Yeah, I just heard. Uh, Rush Limbaugh is a violent racist. Uh, aside from the fact that AOC can't pronounce the word virulent, um, this is where they came down. Every moment of emotion and patriotism and sacrificial concern was cast aside as a stunt in reality TV. It was like, it was too beautiful. I mean, those moments you're celebrating Americans who did great things and they want to take the president out so badly that they were sitting on their hands. I tried something different last night. I sat over on the Democratic side, which I've never done before for the State of the Union address, and the groans, the way that they're pointing at each other. Every time Kristen Cinema stood up and applauding, they were ostracizing her and they were, they were heckling. I was surprised she voted as she did today. I'll tell you she, what, She's a smarter politician. When I first, oh, that was a big mistake that today. That was sad. 
for her. When I first got to Congress, Barack Obama was the president. I went to the State of the Union address, never thought about boycotting, never thought about wake, walking out, never yeah. thought about impeaching him. I was there when I agreed. I stood up. I applauded. He was my president, even though I didn't vote for him. Congressman, it looks like your Democrat colleagues have zero plans to stop investigating the president. Watch. You said it's likely that your committee or some combination of committees will subpoena John Bolton. That's what you're saying. Has the speaker signed off on it? When would this happen? I don't know. I mean, Jerry Nadler just looks like a beaten man in, in, in that clip. But the Democrats are a one-trick pony now in Washington. They offer America only impeachment and investigations because they haven't been able to come together for an immigration plan, an infrastructure plan, anything that would actually impact the lives of the people of this great country. If she can't sit there and act like a decent human being during a State of the Union speech, how is she going to march her white pantsuit itself into the Oval Office and talk infrastructure? Right, she can't, and you got she has to relinquish the gavel, and the American voters has have she's got to retire. You know what I would say? You got to retire. If if you can't even comport yourself at the state, you've called for retire. two people to resign, and it's only the A block. Yeah, well, well, the rest of the show. Right, well, who knows who's going to get the action? Yeah, well, no, no, the no. The show. You guys are safe for right now, Congressman. Thank you for being here. We're going to be following uh, the censure push and uh, all of this. So thank you for updating thank us you. on all of this tonight. Congressman, all right. So there you have. Uh, got your clip there so I just want to offer a bit of my own a bit of my own uh, preface or opening to this right now um, I just want to say and I have and I of course I don't mean to beat a dead horse but I'm just saying as go as we go forward this is what I'm basically just offering you know of course this was this is you know we, we experienced yesterday an expected acquittal with of course uh, the the squatter the squatter Republican Mitt Romney of course uh, you know he he's he's making his mark with that and uh, we'll see where it we'll see what that looks like but I have some ideas but um, it's kind of time to deal with the, with the elephant in the room and when I say that I am speaking about none other than Nancy Pelosi. Okay, so this is my issue, and this is a level of level of hypocrisy. No matter what your faith is or what your unfaith is, you know, after being so prayerful and so solemn during all of these, you know, investigations, these hearings, and the pinnacles of impeachment, you know, she managed to get to her feet and ripped what's the transcript, whether it was official or not. You know, she rips into this thing before the president could even finish his speech. Now, of course, this was done in front of many of, you know, these were honorees. You know, these weren't just, this was America. I mean, people need to understand that this, to me, these kinds of attacks that she's engaging in, it's basically, it's, it's parroting what President Trump has said. And I'm going to paraphrase this. They're attacking him because he's fighting for Americans. Okay? And I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't agree with that more. You know, there was an honorable, you know, a, a General McGee, a McGee of the Tuskegee Airmen. Like, this was, that was a, a, a very, a, le a legacy. A legacy of our, of our, of our military, of the, the brilliance, the skill, you know, the, the valiancy, you know, the, the amount of greatness that this country, the historical greatness in this country. And she manages to, you know, she snubbed so many Americans. And not to mention the student, Janiya, this fourth grader, and her mother, who received, announced that she received a scholarship for her, for school choice. You know, these kids are, these kids are being suppressed in these, in these horrible Democrat run cities where they've got poverty, they've got no choice, they're backed into a corner. So he did mention, you know, that he's putting forth, you know, acts and, and measures to bring these kids a competent, a chance, give these kids a chance. These, these major cities, these Democrat run cities have got the worst and most 
horrible record of failing schools. And they want to impact that with uh, illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, kids. When most people in the cities can't afford to, they, they have to end up forfeiting all of their tax money because they need to send them to a formidable school, which i.e. private or charter. But some people don't have those choices. So he's championing school choice, which, of course, the left, they hate school choice because the teachers' unions will be slighted or be undercut. I mean, this is all in it. These are their special interests. Um, and it goes against their, you know, the indoctrination of their ideologies of, you know, New World Order and UN Agenda 2030 and 21. So, you know, every that's why they're fuming and they're fueling. They're really, he basically, he basically just has dismantled their, their, their unlegacy of however many years, 60 years in his speech. Um, uh, then they tell, oh, you know, it's all lies. It's all lies. And, you know, they they want to deny the economic progress of all communities, you know, whether it was black communities, the unemployment rates, you know, in Hispanic communities, you know, the women's unemployment rates, you know, the high school unemployment rates. I mean, he just really he gave them facts and all they can do is shout lies, lies, lies. And, you know, the reason why they're able to maintain they're able to maintain any of this is because they have the the six media outlets and even the global media outlets tout the same thing, the same propaganda and lies that they put out. You know, the, the media is totally controlled. The media, they, they either they either kill it, they kill the truth or they put out lies so I'm calling them, you know, the media, the, the mainstream media. I don't know if you're familiar with Jericho Green. He calls them the, the mainstream mediocres. I mean, they, it's the media cartel is what I refer to it as at this point. So, you know, as long as we have freedom of speech and we can kind of ramp up and, and get behind the president, that's the only way I think things are going to survive. But I'll continue. I'm getting a little bit out of my, getting out of my, my form here a bit, but you know we're in this together so hopefully you can you can excuse that but I'll continue but also you know you just have to have to mention you know that that to me Nancy Pelosi is always attempting to be some she's always trying to be symbolic I mean look just look at the way she dresses you know this was of course that's one of the other state of the union dress addresses she's wearing white you know this whole culture of these people trying to trying to purport some something that they have no, some culture that they're, you know, ripping off, you're hijacking something that they don't know any historical knowledge about. I mean, she's absolutely unfit, <laughs> undignified. I mean, she's, you can never tell where she is. I mean, wearing black on the impeachment vote and that symbol, I mean, honestly, she's, okay, so beyond that, you know, she's, to me, her ripping up the actual document to me was more of was more another example of them trying to destroy history because if you rip up something you are destroying it you're destroying whether it's somebody else's property or whether it's official or you know you know it's not quite a book burning but it's, it's close enough you know you rip you know, I'm ripping it up I'm trying to destroy that was a historical speech no matter what what walk of life you're coming from, that was a that was a historic speech, and I mean, there's no denying that that was a historic speech. So to me, that party has been trying to hide their history since <laughs> the Civil War. I mean, it's like the Civil War. In some ways, they might try to deny the Civil War ever happened. That they didn't fight a war to maintain their slaves, their holdings, and slavery. And the way that they speak about black people as if they own them. I even heard Sheila Jackson Lee on a financial committee or something, you know, you know, she goes on a her deep voice. Oh, well, uh, yeah, uh, where, where, uh, where, what are you doing about diversity and uh, how many minorities have you hired and uh, uh, where are they placed? Well, you know, you speak about when you speak about minorities like you have authority over them or you need to know where they are like these are your personal holdings then you're nothing more 
then you're you're no more you're nothing more than a, an overseer or a slave master yourself. You know, you, she calls herself in the the black congressional caucus. No. That's not what it is. And and the fact that they would stand behind somebody that would not stand for a child being granted a scholarship on school choice or a a, a, a celebration of a of a Tuskegee of a Tuskegee Airman is absolutely despicable. If the black community can't take off their victimhood glasses long enough to recognize that, then there's really no hope for them. You cannot save everyone. And if that's if if I had one message to extend to the president, he's not going to be able to save them all. He's not. Because some people can't imagine their lives without victimhood. They cannot imagine if they don't, even if, I notice it, some people, when they don't have enough victimhood, they'll go and borrow somebody else's, they'll go and borrow somebody else's tragedy and say, look, 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 look at that, look at that, look how that affects me. I mean, it, you know, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up unless people, and until these people free their minds, and start thinking for themselves and start getting the truth directly. Start watching. I mean, I can't tell them anything else. If you want to know what the president says, watch the State of the Union address yourself. Watch a Trump rally. Why do you need to be told by an Oprah Winfrey or a Sonny or a Sonny Delete on The View or any of these people? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going into a bit <laughs> a bit of a rant. So I I mean but I, I, I'm only speaking, you know, this is, it's a disgrace for, to live in a country where there's more opportunities than anywhere else in the world to have people whining, whimping and whining and crying and looking for, you know, they look for disparities and they are training an entire generation of kids to look for those same disparities. It's not just the black kids. They're training other minorities. They're importing illegals, importing their voter base. They're going to train them the same way. Well, the black vote is already disposable uh, to them already, and that's why they are importing illegals at the rate that they are. Now, I will say, if you're tuning in, I, I thank you for, for being here, and, and who knows, this might not make it. <laughs> this might not, may not make it. But, um, you know, the truth outshines everything. It really will. And I think that the, you know, I really hope that everybody will show up at the polls the way that they need to and that we can, that we can start to restore some dignity and truth to this country and, and, rest, and the Constitution for crying out loud. It needs to be, not only does it need to be upheld, but it needs, there's a lot of things, it's not the original Constitution that we're dealing with. We've, 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 they've added things that, that make us less free less self-governing and half the country doesn't know what the constitution says about them as an individual they don't know what it says they've never picked up a copy the schools are not teaching civics they failed the 1960s managed to crush everything crush the liberals write the history books they write the textbooks so they control the narrative for so long and we have to take it back. In order, if this country is to survive the next 10 years, we have to take it back. So I'm sorry, I will, <laughs> I will continue here. I've gotten off a little bit. But here again, that's what I'm talking about historically. You know, if they're controlling the narrative, you'll never get the truth out. If they're destroying speeches or transcripts, then when will the truth come out? If not today, if not on Tuesday's speech, when will it come out? Are we going to leave it up to them to re to keep telling lies and prop and, and, and providing propaganda education? What are we going to do? Um, so I'll just keep going on. So, but it's just time to call things what they are. You know, they don't just hate President Trump as a separate entity. It's not just Trump supporters. I mean, it's more like Specifically, they hate the people that he represents, and that would be America. You know, I really think it's, it's fair that, that Nancy Pelosi resign and not be permitted to enter office again. Many of these people are not fit to be in office, to hold anything. You, they, need to, they need to go. 
drain the swamp, whatever you call it. It needs to, it needs to be, you know, we need, we need to add Drano. You know, it's not going fast enough. I mean, it's, this thing is deep. The spectrum is deep and the criminal and the exploitation of, so, of our social security funds have been exploited by at least two generate by at least two administrations and under the guise of foreign aid and bailouts and yeah it's collateral they use our social security funds as collateral to commit whatever they want and if, if president trump sneezes an executive order or something they're all on the attack and whining and crying and buzzing their you know their their media outlets so I'm sorry, I will, I will finish this. I'm sorry, it's taking me a long time here. But um, I, I just, you know, Nancy Pelosi does not represent America or its values or its constitution. Not the original one, not the one with the amendments, not the Bill of Rights. She does not represent that. It's fictitious when she touts and mocks the constitution. It's very disrespectful. And I think she needs to be called out. She needs to, more than called out. She needs to be done, along with Nadler, Schiff, Schumer, this, I mean, you know, they are just, we are, they, we have been, we have, we the people, we need our power back, our authority back as people. We don't need the power to amuse a mob. We need the power that's been bestowed in the country's original founding. That's the only way to survive. But. There again, I'll continue, sorry. Um, so I would encourage everyone, you know, write, write your Congress. Go on to jbs.org. You know, pull up, pull up any senator, any, any House representative that you want to contact. There's a way to drop, to, to blast multiple representatives at one time. And you can get your message out and say, look, the primaries are next month. You know, we have to start, we have to do, we have to be, we have to create, be more active and more involved. Many people are not. They're sitting on their hands, twiddling their thumbs and thinking they live in some kind of utopia. And, you know, I mean, I've seen the things I see on social media are ridiculous. Like, oh, well, what was the kid's name? If, uh, who cares what the kid's name was that, that, you know, that she couldn't stand up for? Who, what does that, what difference does it make? And I mean, I've, and a lot of this is in is in response to her press conference this morning was absolute another mockery. So I'll, get, I'll finish this out and I'll just do a brief on that. But lastly, you know, this is the, the, the here's another media op, a media buzz or media clip. You know, lastly, you know, she sets up this handshake for those whether you watched it or not, which was. You know, basically a temp a template was I mean is that was that even appropriate? You know, so she sets up this 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 handshake, which I think was just a it was it was something she set up for for a photo op. She set it up because it's interesting that you know she would set that up while somebody's handing the president's handing her a copy of the speech, but then she goes for a handshake. And of course, that's in the media, you know, they keep it. And of course, CNN is just loop, 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 loop. Every day is Groundhog's Day on that channel. Um, so I'm just thinking, you know, does she not know what the expectation is? Or is she just such a drama queen and still power struggling for a, a position that she doesn't have, i.e. President of the United States, that she has to be the one, so she, she has to be the one who initiates a handshake? I mean, this was the president's address. And if, if they, you know, if they're looking for something, why don't they show? He didn't shake Mike, Mike Pence's hand either. But, and neither did Mike Pence. Mike Pence did not initiate a handshake. But see, this is a part of, this is who these people are. They try to set, they've been reduced to gestures and, and photo ops and, and media mockeries. That's all they have left. That's how they're that's how they're staying in the news. They're relevant based on what the media sensationalized. A handshake is all they have. So, you know, I'm sure he sh he shook her hand many times. But I'm sure if he didn't shake it again, he would be fine, especially considering, you know, all of this 
impeachment drama that she's drummed up. So there, that was, uh, I'm sorry, but that was my take on that. But yeah, I just, you know, just to, to, to tag out on this, I mean, I saw her do another comp, a conference, her, her pathetic, um, her conference, her media press, press conference this morning. And she talked about how he was, oh, he, those are all falsehoods. And, you know, he's, he's disrespecting, uh, you know, Obama. And I'm like, she's sitting up here defending Obama's global mandates and, talking about how he's he's not working hard for health care and prescription drugs. Oh, he sold out to pharma and you know, social socialized health care is what he's not going to support. And most Americans don't support that for their own reasons. For liberty. You don't want the government in your health care or making promises that they cannot keep. So socialism is still what she's but hurt about. That she's but hurt about they're they're trying to Obama's Obama this and Obama that every other word was Obama this in her press conference this morning Obama has no he had he cannot hold a candle to what's going on right now he was the one I paraphrase it saying that now the jobs are not coming back to America is there unless you have a magic wand well you know I guess he I guess he the president has had better than a magic wand because you know he's already defied that and then some but she's just, oh, well, this is just all lies. And, you know, like, she's not even civil. She's not civil. She's not dignified. She's just, you know, a walking time bomb that needs to resign. And, you know, because, and then she said that she was upset about, she mentions Rush Limbaugh. Oh, well, I thought when he mentioned somebody with cancer, he was going to talk about John Lewis. Oh, so you're upset because he invited American people, regular people, and not a not a, a, a corrupt delete. You know, whether you're, you know, he's honoring Americans. You know, he can honor you, he can honor somebody in, in, you know, in the ivory tower any day. But he chose to do it another way. He's restoring a promise or restoring restoring you know, the, the American paradigm, the American strengths. It wasn't a time to honor somebody, you know, like, it's just like, it's not even her choice. It's not her choice to decide who he wants to honor or who he wants to bring attention to. They were American people. What would she have him honor illegals for, <laughs> I guess, in her state of the union, she'll have a few illegals up there and honoring them for, for, for successfully subverting ICE and, you know, <laughs> can you imagine... I'm just saying that, you know, it, there just needs to be, I think the American people are really getting fed up with the amount of, the amount of things that this party is allowed to get away with. We know the crimes. We know who the perpetrators are. Why isn't there something being done? And I'm, and I'm really kind of fresh out of let's trust the plan and let's, you know, let's trust the code. Let's decode this and, you know, let's, you know, and bestowing all this faith and all these people, why can't we just, you know, why is this not easier to do? They're exposing themselves. Yeah, they are. But are they, but justice, when are they going to be brought to justice? We are accountable for our actions. Why are they not? So I'm sorry I've gone on to a tantrum here and I went over a bit, but I'd like to thank everyone and anyone who has tuned in for this segment of Black Spring. And let me know what you think. Of course, what are your concerns? What are your comments? Um, it always helps with suppression of conservatives and American patriots and people that just want balance and they just want, they just want the truth about what's going on, where we're going. This is a huge election season. It's a, it's a, tor a turning point. It's a very pivotal point. And... I appreciate you for being here, so let me know. Also, if you can, like, subscribe, share, and I will be happy to see you guys again next time on Black Spring with Autumn.